Well, a good afternoon. Uh, as Nico said, I'm Sean, and I've spent most of today carrying around both a pair of sunglasses and an umbrella. I don't know about you. Uh, we were down here this afternoon and we all got wet for a second and then we all got dry and then we all got wet and we all got dry. Um, so I'm glad the sun is out. Uh, those of you who obviously, you're all in the shade, sorry, these guys got the best seats. I can see the Crowshaws have got their um, fake tan on, so that's good. <laughs> um, so this morning, um, if you haven't watched it already, I, I shared in the uh, morning service as I spoke then, uh, some photos of what happened to my garden this week uh, in Thursday's rain. Um, it was quite a day, and uh, both the street and uh, my, my garden, and all of our gardens that back onto the street, were under a significant amount of water. My follow-up question to this, who has ever owned or has owned, currently, a cat? Okay, keep your hand up if your cat likes water. Okay, very few. So our cat was out um, at the time that the heavens literally opened. And I've never been worried about our cat because he's, he's resilient, he, he makes his own way. Um, but when the water was reaching up to our calves in our garden, I realized our cat had no physical way to return to the house. I started to get a little bit worried. We've never worried before, but we thought, well, Elliot doesn't like water. Um, I don't know if a cat can swim. I've never seen him try. Um, we've never put him in the bath or anything like that. So how is our cat going to be home? How is he going to arrive back into our house? And uh, I, I'm, I studied physics at university. The thing that came to my mind straight away was the idea of Schrodinger's cat. Anyone know what that is? Yeah, the idea that, I mean, it's a long thought experiment and it's, it's on the internet, but it's the idea that uh, if there's a cat that you can't see, into the Schrodinger's cat example, it's in a box. Um, then you have, and admittedly in the thought experiment they put poison in the box, but that's another story. Um, without opening the lid of the box, you cannot tell whether the cat is alive or dead. And that sounds a bit somber for a, uh, 5 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon. But at that moment, as my cat was somewhere in Lake Ashted, I did not know whether my cat was alive or dead. On another thing, uh, uh, there's some people here who are getting results this week uh, for their GCSEs. And last week we had a, a good horde of people picking up their A-level results as well. Now, normally, if you're picking up results, you've sat an exam. And you know, as soon as you come out of that exam, you have a gut feeling of how well you did. Because you know whether or not you made it to the last question, whether you realised there was a question on the last page. Um, and so you have an idea of how your marks are going to go. This year, our students haven't really got the foggiest. So that is a huge area, a big question mark over what's coming up next in their lives. And also this weekend, yesterday, I don't know if you saw it, but we celebrated VJ Day, which is victory over Japan. It marked the end of World War II. There was a brilliant commemoration on BBC last night. I, I commend that to you if you haven't seen it. Uh, but my great, my, no, my, my grandfather, my granddad Jack, he fought in Burma. He went over there uh, in 1944 with absolutely no idea what he was going out for. And lots of the men who went out there and women who went out there, they got on ships in Liverpool in my granddad's case and weren't quite sure of their destination or what was uh, coming up for them. And my granddad spent about five months trekking through the jungle of Burma making very little progress, battling things like malaria uh, about six months after they went out. But what links those three things together is the idea of uncertainty. And this is the topic we've been exploring this weekend. And is definitely, as I've said this morning, it's a real buzzword for the last five months. We haven't known what's going to happen. We haven't known what's going to come up in the uh, PM's briefing. I don't know about you, but I was very much glued to BBC News over those first couple of weeks every evening as Boris and his, his pals took to the podium and shared something else and we didn't really know what was coming. Um, and that first couple of weeks were uh, very turbulent. But one of the stories in the Bible deals with this idea of uncertainty and it's Jesus calming the storm. It's a story we all know. It's Jesus in a boat and he calms a storm. That's the summary. Uh, but Let's look at some parts of it. So first of all, it was all about Jesus was with his disciples and they decided to go somewhere else. So the disciples took Jesus along in a boat and there was a horrendous storm, a really, really bad storm. 
And the thing that straight away stands out to me in this story, not um, that there was a big storm, but that Jesus was asleep. Now, we know the shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept, but in this case, Jesus slept. I can't sleep in a storm if I'm in a house. Um, how Jesus managed to sleep in a storm on a reasonably small boat on a huge turbulent lake, I don't know. But Jesus was asleep in this boat as everything around was quite frankly falling to pieces. And I think as we go through our own journeys, both in faith and life, we can feel a bit like Jesus is asleep. Because we ask for things, we sometimes we don't hear an answer. We hit a global pandemic and we can't see a way out. Is Jesus sleeping? But he's in the boat. And his disciples wake him up. And they say to Jesus, don't you care if we drown? You're asleep. Come on, you're, you're, first of all, you're Jesus. You should be doing something about this. You're the, you're the big miracle worker. We've seen you do this awesome stuff. Why are you asleep? Don't you care about me? I don't know about you, but I've definitely had those sorts of arguments, um, if not with my parents or siblings, um, with God at some point in my life. If you've had those moments where you're shouting, where you're angry at God, God, why don't you care? It seems like you're sleeping, that you're not paying any attention. Jesus simply gets up in the boat and says the words, quiet, be still. Now, on first reading, you go, yeah, well, he's obviously he's talking to the waves and he can communicate uh, with the wind and the storm. And he's telling that he's telling the waves to be still. He's telling the wind and the storm to be quiet. But I wonder, is he talking to his disciples? Is he talking to us? Because when we're in a place where we're going, oh, God, why are you asleep? Why aren't you listening to me? Why is nothing going right? Are we giving God a chance? Are we ever taking the time to be quiet, to be still? Once Jesus had given this command to the wind and the waves, or indeed to his disciples, he challenges them. He says to them, why are you so afraid? Why do you have so little faith? And we can totally be like that, can't we? When we get wrapped up in a moment, when things boil and bubble over, we can sit there and go, well, we, we've lost all perspective for a moment. All we care about is the thing that's going wrong right now. That doesn't have to be a big thing. It's like when you go to open the cupboard and like a box of pasta falls out and goes all over the floor and you feel like the world has ended. Or when you kind of, you're going to load a plate in the dishwasher and it kind of leaves your hand halfway there and falls into the dishwasher with a great smash. That was Sarah, not me. Um, but we all have those moments. And in that little moment, we can go, we, we lose perspective. We don't think, well, I've actually had a really good day so far. Why am I going to let this one little thing ruin it for me? We don't look back on our lives with perspective and go, hang on. Why don't I have faith in God for this time? Because actually, God's been there the whole way. So in this little moment, as we just sang or mouthed, in the middle of the storm, that's right where Jesus is. And Jesus isn't sleeping in the boat out of recklessness, out of not caring for us. Perhaps he's just waiting for us to be still. So a couple of things I want you to consider and take away is first of all God knows your situation he knows exactly everything that is going on in your life he was in the boat he knew there was a storm he knew the disciples were terrified God knows and God cares God cares for you so much that he's wanting to make a change in your life he's wanting to bring you on to the next thing a greater thing Jesus was in the boat, and yes, he was there. He knew what was going on, but he also cared enough to tell them to be still, to calm the wind and the waves. And finally, God can be trusted. We should look back on the things that have gone so far, the things that have happened in our lives up to now, 
and realize that God can be trusted. And even right now, if you're in a place where you go, actually, I can't look back because what's happening right now is just so difficult. Then read some stories. Read the Bible. See what God has to say about who he is. See what all the writers in the Bible tell stories of how God has provided for them. Speak to friends and family members and see how God has provided for them. And use that as your basis to know that God can be trusted. And a couple of actions that we can take as we go forward as well. So as a church, as Christian people, how do we bring certainty to a world that perhaps doesn't know God? I think we have to be real. We have to be honest about the things that we go through both individually and as a community. We have to realize that life is really, really tough. We have to listen to other people as well. We have to hear their stories, give them a chance to speak, to contribute to the story that we all share. We have to live in community just like those first disciples did. The beautiful thing about being locked down is how well we've gotten to know our neighbours and the people we might not have spoken to for months or years. And a community that's not based on patronising each other because maybe we're different or we're different generations, but a community that's built on mutual friendship and respect for each other. And finally, we've got to show others that there is something to live for. That God is greater than everything that we go through. God shares our passions, he knows us, and he wants us to succeed. So uh, I'm going to ask the band to come back. And as I said, Jesus told his disciples to be still, to be quiet. And we so often don't give God a chance to speak to us. And we don't have an opportunity to listen. So we're going to spend a couple of moments, and this is a form of prayer because this is talking to God. We're going to listen to God and see what he has to say for us in our lives right now. Now, you might not have done this before, but basically it's really simple. I'm going to ask, uh, Matt's just going to play uh, a couple of choruses over and over again. Um, and, and we're going to, if it helps you to close your eyes and not be distracted, that's great. But otherwise, try and, try and clear your mind of the, the thoughts and the distractions from today. And just try really hard to listen to God. And then what I want you to do is, if any thoughts came into your mind, however random, however obscure, as long as they're positive things, then I really want you to write it down or draw it or some way of making a note of what you heard. So we're just going to spend a couple of minutes doing this. So let's start that now. Let's listen to God. Let's be still. 